The string family is divided into two groups, the bowed string and the plucked string, so named because of their normal playing technique. The bowed strings form a highly unified ensemble that is the center of the orchestra. The string section is capable of a wide range of expression, wonderful blend in the accompaniment textures and tireless performance. The string sound never seems to pall on the ear, as does the sound of most other orchestral instruments, and more or less continuous string sound is characteristic of orchestral writing. Two common members of the plucked string family, the harp and guitar, will be discussed in another lecture. Now we will deal with the common bowed string instruments, the violin, the viola, the cello, and the bass. These instruments share many common performance techniques that will be introduced before the individual instruments are discussed. The tone of the bowed string instrument is normally produced by drawing the bow across one or more of the strings. When the bow is drawn away from the instrument, it is referred to as a down bow, and in when it is drawn toward the instrument, it is called an up bow. Players are normally taught to start a passage down bow when it begins on an accented beat, particularly the first beat of a measure, and to start up bow when an unaccented note or notes precedes an accented beat. Passages that observe this normal pattern do not need up bow and down bow symbols. If the normal pattern is to be reversed, alert the player by drawing the up or down bow above the first note of the passage. The bow has a similar function to the air and wind instruments, and there are many parallels. Number one, the bow is limited in length, just as the supply of air is limited for wind players. Number two, the duration that can be played on a single bow, or breath, varies with the dynamic level. Much more bow is required for loud playing than for soft. Number three, string players use the bow to produce phrasing and articulation, just as wind players use their breath. An important difference is that the bow can be used in both directions, whereas the wind player must stop to breathe. This means that the strings can be played for long periods of time without stopping. The slur is used in string parts to show groups of notes that are be to be played under a single bow. There is little agreement among string players as to the names for the various styles of bowing. The following list of common bowing styles is not at all exhaustive and the names are not to be considered definitive, but the notation symbols, at least, are standardized. In détaché bowing, the bow direction changes with each note, with no silence between notes. This bowing is assumed in the absence of any of the special bowing indications. Détaché bowing may involve a very smooth connection between notes, or the notes may be accented. The passage from Pictures at an Exhibition is an illustration of détaché bowing. When groups of notes are slurred together, the bowing is legato. The slur sign is the proper notation for legato bowing, as shown in the following passage from the fourth movement of Tchaikovsky's Symphony No. 6. There are two types of string staccato on the string, in which the bow actually stops on the string to make the space between the notes, and off the string, or spiccato, in which the bow bounces off the string. In both cases, the bow direction changes with each note. The staccato dot is the proper indication for both types, and the player normally chooses the type that is the appropriate for the given passage. The following passage from the Nutcracker Suite is an illustration of off-the-string staccato. Several staccato notes, generally no more than three or four, can be slurred together. This means that the player takes them in the same bow, but makes a slight separation between the notes. This is a favorite bowing for repeated note figures in accompaniments.
as shown in the following example from the Nutcracker Suite. An alternate method of playing the bowed string instruments is to pluck the string with the finger, an effect that is called pizzicato. A beat or two of rest is normally required for the string player to shift from bowed, arco, to plucked, pizzicato. The proper notation for pizzicato is the abbreviation pizz, and the return to bowing should be indicated by arco, as shown in the following example from Bizet's Jeu d'Enfant. Two distinct types of tremolo are available on the bowed string instruments. Bowed tremolo, in which the bow is moved back and forth as fast as possible, and fingered tremolo, which is an expanded trill covering the interval of a third or a fourth. Bowed tremolo is a device that produces a rustling effect at softer dynamic levels, It produces energy and excitement at higher dynamic levels. The fingered tremolo is a rapid alternation of two notes on the same string, in the manner of a trill, with the notes taken under a single bow. The effect is somewhat similar to that of the bowed tremolo, as illustrated in the following passages from Bartok's Hungarian sketches. And Britain's The Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra. Notice the notation of the fingered tremolo. Each note is given full value on the theory that they are both sounding for the entire duration. If a string is lightly touched at precisely its midpoint, the fundamental pitch is suppressed and the second partial sounds. This effect, which is available on all string instruments, is known as a natural harmonic. It is possible to touch the string in several places so that any one of the first four or even more partials will sound. On the violin's open G string, you can press a second partial, which is the G above that, the third partial, which is a fifth above that, and then the fourth partial, another fourth above that. The following passage from the Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra uses several natural harmonics. Roman numerals serve to indicate the string to be used, with I assigned to the highest string and four to the lowest string. In addition to the natural harmonics described, the violin and viola are sometimes asked to play artificial harmonics. These are produced by fingering any note and touching the string to bring out the fourth partial, a pitch two octaves higher than the fingered note. The notation for artificial harmonics shows the note to be fingered, the note to be touched, a diamond-shaped note a perfect fourth above the fingered note, and usually, but not always, the pitch that results, a Q-sized note two octaves above the finger note. Artificial or harmonics are relatively rare in orchestral writing, since they are more difficult to produce. A small wood, metal, or plastic mute can be placed on the bridge of a bowed string instrument to produce a veiled and softer tone quality. Specify consordino, or muted. The effect of muting an entire string section is quite lovely, as the opening of Bartok's Hungarian sketches illustrates. When the mutes are to be removed, specify senza sordino, or remove mutes. It's possible to play on two strings at the same time, producing an effect called a double stop. 
Chords can be played in arpeggio on three or four strings, triple stop, quadruple stop. A complete treatment of multiple stops is beyond the scope of this lecture. You may refer to one of the many orchestration or instrumentation manuals available. Multiple stops are relatively rare in orchestral writing since it's usually better to divide a string section rather than have them try to play a multiple stop in tune. However, Bartok's Hungarian sketches clearly calls for a quadruple stop in the violins and a triple stop in the violas and cellos. The individual tone colors of the four strings make the primary distinction in sound on the violin. The low G is rich and dark, the D above that is subdued, the A above that is sonorous, the E is bright, and it increasingly gets more brilliant as you go up. The violin is the most agile of the bowed string family. It is capable of playing nearly any melodic line, although extreme chromaticism presents a challenge. The pizzicato is quite resonant on the G and D strings, but the upper strings are much weaker in sound, and notes above the treble staff are generally disappointing. The finger tremolo is limited in range to a fourth, the normal reach between first and fourth fingers. Natural harmonics should be limited to the second through the fourth partials. Notice that the viola is normally written in the alto clef, except for the upper register where it shifts to the treble clef to avoid ledger lines. The alto clef should be used for all passages that don't involve more than two or three ledger lines. Players are accustomed to parts that shift from clef to clef, but you should try not to use more than one clef per measure. The individual tone colors of the four strings make the primary distinction in sounds on the viola. The low C is rich and thick, the G above that subdued, the D above that more gentle, the A becomes a bit nasal and penetrating, and it becomes increasingly bright as you ascend. The viola is not as agile as the violin, but its capabilities are similar to those of the violin in many ways. The pizzicato is quite effective on all strings, although the best effect is obtained in the range of an octave above each open string. The finger tremolo is limited, as on the violin, to the range of a fourth, and the second through fourth partials may be used effectively for natural harmonics. The range of the cello is extensive. The lower part of the range is written in the bass clef, while the upper middle area uses the tenor clef. Finally, the extreme upper range is written in the treble clef. You should judge the general tessitura of a given passage in deciding which clef to use. In general, you should use the clef that will result in the fewer ledger lines. The individual tone colors of the four strings make the primary distinction in the sound on the cello. The low C is rich and full, and the cello goes increasingly warm and intense as you move up until finally it's quite bright in its very upper register. The cello is the most agile of the bass instruments of the orchestra. Its resonant tone and relatively long string length make the pizzicato very effective in all registers. Fingered tremolos are limited to a major third in the lower registers, but may be wider in the upper registers where the cellist can stop the string by using the thumb. The natural harmonics speak quite well and may be used effectively for the second through fifth or sometimes sixth partial. Some basses have a fifth string that is tuned to double C, while others may have an extension on the E string to reach the C double C. Basses without the fifth string or extension must either tune the E string down to double C or move the part an octave higher. The double bass is the only transposing member of the bowed string family. It transposes an octave to avoid ledger lines. The individual tone colors of the four strings make the primary distinction on the sound of the bass. The low string, E, is dark and rough. The middle two, A and D, are much more mellow. And finally, the G, the top string, is quite singing and almost cello-like. It increases its intensity as you go up. The tone of the double bass is surprisingly weak, 
and must be supported by the cello section or the wind basses, the bassoon, trombone, tuba. The instrument is much less agile than the cello and sometimes plays simplified versions of the cello's part. I provide here three YouTube videos of excellent works that illustrate string writing, along with a few measures that you might find particularly striking. For more information and examples, I encourage you to use Instrument Studies for Eyes and Ears, developed by Don Freund at Indiana University.